This is Pixelated Audio, and you're listening to Advanced Fantasian Quest for Lost Sanctuary. Welcome to Pixelated Audio, a podcast focusing on game audio, its history, and the people behind it. We're your hosts. I'm Gene, and this is Brian. How's it going? Today we're going to be playing music and talking about Advanced Fantasian for the PC-8801 and the Sharp X1. And uh, that track that brought us in was Holy Legend from the PC-88 version of Advanced Fantasian. Yes, we're going to be sticking mostly with the uh, PC-88 version throughout the show. We may do a quick demo, but... Suffice it to say, this one sounds a little bit better overall. <laughs> sounds a lot better overall, yeah. but yeah, this is a yeah, this is a, a, a really great soundtrack. Really fun to listen to. I'm excited to uh, pass the notes along and and uh, listen to some great music. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is this is an interesting one. It came up. Um, we had Xerxes on the show a few months back, episode 147, and one of the tracks he played was from a golf track, and I loved that track so much. I looked up who the composer was which brought us to Yumi Satake, which brought us to some of her earlier works. And it's like, hey, this game sounds pretty cool. So we looked it up. Lots of great music. So that's what we're talking about today. This is uh, one of her first soundtracks. I think maybe her first, actually. So I don't know. Uh, Brian, what, what's your thoughts about Advanced Fantasian? <laughs> <laughs> My thoughts? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, it's it's a later uh, PC-88 game in the sense that, you know, came out uh late 88 almost 89 and uh i i think by this point you know a, a lot of the the, you know, the original one the uh, first fantasian game we'll get into this later but uh was kind of really going on the heels of everything that was coming from the west as far as like you know the the, the die rolling you know the dungeon dragons um rpgs and i think that this is really like uh the next level iteration of that still for the earlier system so there's uh you know the the graphics are, are pretty cool in some spots uh the the movement moving around the the dungeons is a little bit bleak but at the same time got a really cool soundtrack to back it up so uh makes the game kind of exciting kind of fun to play through and if you really like those kind of western old western style rpgs this game would probably be a lot of fun would you say that this is the advanced version of Fantasian, Brian? Is, is that what you're getting at? I'm not sure. It I is the that. more advanced uh, <laughs> quest for Lost Sanctuary, if, if you <laughs> catch me. So it's a Japanese-only first-person dungeon crawler RPG. It's actually more complex than that, but uh, you can think of it like the classic wizardry-style games that were really popular in Japan uh, then and actually still now. Uh, to some degree, they're not as popular as they used to be, but they were really huge for many, many years. Uh, as we said, it was the sequel to Fantasian, which came out in 1985. Very simple, uh, not a whole lot of music, a lot of just like sound effects. And this was developed by the company Crystalsoft, but it's spelled X-T-A-L. So we're just going to call it Crystalsoft because Extalsoft just doesn't sound right. <laughs> well, and then the Japanese is Crystalsoft, so I, they they had a, a reason for it. Right. So. Fewer characters, easier to put on the box. <laughs> <laughs> so that was released, yeah, in December of 1988 and for the Sharp X1 in, I think, May of 1989. Those are the credits that we have. Yeah. And the entire team from programming to art to music was only seven people at Crystal Soft. It's pretty awesome. That's yeah, a I tiny mean, this, team. <laughs> but, but, but back then, that was, you know, pretty standard size for a software, you know, group true right especially a game <laughs> yeah. a game company you know in 80 86 85 86 
And uh, the, the way the game actually works is it's like a lot of other, you know, dungeon crawling RPGs uh, at the time. Wizardry, in this sense, you pick five different characters as a human, a dwarf, an elf, a halfling, a half elf. And then those are kind of set in stone. You can't really do much with them. But what you can do is you can change their uh, you can customize how the character features um, behave a little bit differently. So you can, you know, level up certain aspects and uh, skills and traits, different magic and stuff like that, um, lock picking, and you can get into, uh, you know, get your characters really kind of geared towards your play style. So um, we'll talk more about the gameplay, but that's essentially it. Yeah. And before we get any further, I do want to get into some more music. So this next track is Encounter. That was Encounter, composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka. You know, this is a pretty sullen track, to be honest, uh, for a battle theme. And this is the one you're going to hear quite often uh, when you get into combat. It's it's a beautiful track, but definitely very dark, very heavy. Yeah, not a lot of <laughs> um, not a lot of energy in this one, actually. It's got those um, kind of dissonant back and PSG sounds that kind of make things uncomfortable. Um, but it's a good track. It's a really good track. Yeah. To be honest, I think the turnaround with the little like arpeggio at the end is a little cheesy, but like I love the rest of the track. It's just got this really, I don't know, it's just very moody. I love, I love, well, I love music of all types, but you know, it's not what we think of as the standard battle music today, which is like super up tempo, everything's going crazy all the time. So it's cool, right? Right. <laughs> and uh, the the game itself was, you know, released on uh, the PC eighty eight. Specifically, I think it was geared towards the PC-8801, the MK2 SR series, using the OPNA. So that, that we're listening to you know, the OPA. However, um, I believe it the, the sound design for this was still really like basically the OPN. So there's only really the three FM channels and the three PSG. So, um, you know, it's not like the full, you know, rich OPN sound that we normally hear, but it's still got a lot of really good solid qualities to it. Yeah, yeah, especially those kind of like lower chordish kind of sounds they got in the bass. I mean, it's it's kind of a pretty thick sound for how few channels it's using. I like it a lot. Yeah. Before we go any further, let's jump into another track. We got so much great music. This next one, this is Quest. <laughs> Thank you. 
let's talk about the company a little bit. Crystal Soft. Again, read out as Crystal Soft, even though it's spelled X T A L Soft. <laughs> Uh, it's a Japanese developer, mostly in the role-playing games. It started in 82, and they were really small. Uh, not really any well-known games in the West, but some of their titles are Crimson, the trilogy uh, of RPGs, Lizard, and the awesome-sounding combat simulator Battle Gorilla. Uh, <laughs> they only had one title that made it to the S, actually, uh, called Curse of Babylon, and I have not played that. Never heard of any of their games, to be honest. Lizard sounds cool. Uh, Combat Simulator Battle Gorilla sounds cool. <laughs> but I, looked like, at, I looked at screenshots. Battle Gorilla looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. It looks a little Advance wars uh, Yeah. It's still, you know, like an RPG. It just happens to be a military one instead of a high fantasy kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, in 1986, Crystal Soft, along with six other companies, joined to create Disc Original Group, a collective publisher for Famicom Disk System titles, headed by Squaresoft. The Disc Original Group also included the companies Carry Lab, Hummingbird Soft, Microcabin, System Sacom, and Thinking Rabbit. A lot of familiar names yeah. on there that have made a lot of appearances on the show actually <laughs> exactly some really obscure japanese developers i think hummingbird soft is probably coming up sometime soon that's one that we haven't covered but of course square soft they'll be coming back up a few times <laughs> possibly and system sacom of course you know yes <laughs> that was one... <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly uh oh brings me back to uh yude kun i know episode <laughs> such a great game too anyways uh crystal soft's contribution to under the disc original group were sort of kalen uh but members of the team including some of the composers on advanced fantasia would go on to work with squaresoft later on um on different titles that they did and uh and then in the 80s Crystal Soft had some management problems, and around 1990, October 1st, of 1990, they combined with TNE Soft to form TNE Soft's Osaka Development Department. And we talked about TNE Soft in our last episode, actually, Greatest Driver. Yeah, that was a total coincidence. We were looking at this music. I didn't know that until we started researching this. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Things always tie together. We were just talking yeah. about this before we started recording, actually, that, you know, uh, all these companies, it's like a, a big mess of like, you know, it's <laughs> like spaghetti webs. Like all, there's only like really about like a hundred people in like gaming back in the eighties in Japan. And they just happen to be at every company <laughs> cross paths somehow. End up Pretty there. much. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's basically like Silicon Valley for the startups. Like you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, just like our last episode, all of Crystal Soft's IPs are owned by D4 Enterprise, along with the rest of TNE's stuff. So, if you're waiting for uh, Super Advanced Fantasia, along with uh, Pebble Beach Golf, you're gonna have to keep waiting. Sorry, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into some more music. <laughs> yeah, this is Chaser, composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka. <laughs> was Chaser, composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka. Now, I gotta say, clearly they were listening to a lot of MJ, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> some, some funk and soul and stuff. Not every track in the soundtrack is dire. There's a couple of really fun tunes in here. Yeah, like this one's <laughs> this one's interesting. Like the, the name is Chaser, so you'd think it'd be something a little frantic, a little, you know, anxiety inducing, but nah, man, this one's great. This is a sweet, funky little track. I love it. Oh, like yeah. It. 
Yeah. Crypt of the Necro Dancer. It's got that same vibe. It's like, I got to dance my way into this dungeon. You yeah. Know, gotta- <laughs> <laughs> dance my way out of it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, really cool collection of composers we got this time. Uh, early employees at a small game company. Age- this is like our jam. This is like seriously oh, yeah. like our wheelhouse. What, like these very talented, skilled uh, people, even beyond like music, just incredible individuals being able to showcase some of their stuff. This is like what we like are all about, and I I can't wait to talk more about them. <laughs> so so tell me about uh, Yumi Satake, also known as uh, Yumi Kinoshita, right? So yeah yeah. So this uh, track Chaser uh, is actually what really kicked off this whole thing. And Brian, do you want to queue up Pebble Beach Golf Links for just a sec? I think people will get it right away. (laughs) There's no mistaking that intro. I'm pretty sure Chaser was composed by Yumi Satake because like, (laughs) that's like quoting yourself right there. It's, you know, I, I was like, when we were looking for the music, I heard this track and I'm like, it's the thing from Pebble Beach. <laughs> so, I, yep, yep. Yeah, that's kind of what started all this off. But Yume Satake, also uh, Yumi Kinoshita, as she was known at the time before she got married. Very interesting. Uh, graduated from Osaka University in 1983 with degrees in Spanish and folklore studies. I got this from her, her LinkedIn. So, like, I'm not making this up from some third party. This is how she put it. <laughs> like, music, folklore studies, why not, right? Like... You're you're a creative and curious person. That's <laughs> doesn't matter if you studied music or not. <laughs> totally fine. Totally fine. Oh yeah, she's she's uh, worked in music composition, sound design, marketing, product management, programming. Uh, she was an audio director for a time. She has localized a few games into English. Been an interpreter for multiple languages, I believe English and Spanish. When I last le- looked, probably a bunch more stuff. Uh, <laughs> in the year 2000, she created her own company called Yumi's Club, which is an agency, um, software agency that specializes in game design, sound design, uh, software development, web design, a little bit of everything if you need some stuff built for you or if you also need work for your games. Uh, so I know she was personally working on that stuff for until about 2008 or nine. Uh, her first credit, as far as I could tell, was this game, Advanced Fantasian. She worked on Crimson 2 and 3. T&E golf games uh, like, of course, Pebble Beach Golf Links, True Golf Classics, Wicked 18. And uh, she was sound director for a few T&E golf games later on. And the last credits I could find worked on a lot of these um, pets with a Z games. So basically the games that like hopefully nobody's played. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. You, you get a cool jam, right? You know, hamsters, pets, bunnies, and pets, dogs, family. Yeah, yeah. I feel stupid even saying these things out loud. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> game's a game, right? Somebody's yeah. got to write the music for it. And I'm sure they're great, honestly. <laughs> yeah. You know, speaking of which, we just played Chaser, which is like such a fun track. Uh, I, I feel like we're not going to get another chance to get to the X1 version stuff if we don't do a comparison now. So do you want to listen to a little bit of Chaser on the X1? This is probably the most obvious uh, that there's something amiss. It sounds <laughs> off. It sounds wrong. Um, but why don't we just listen to it yeah. anyway and, and listen to, I, unless like the emulation or something we're getting is bad here. Like, I don't know. Maybe just this is it. Let's take a quick listen. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not too bad. It's just, it's a little cringy in a few parts, but otherwise it's not bad. It's a little wonky. I mean, that horn sound is yeah. just, the pitch bend is completely, <laughs> it's a transcription problem. Somebody yeah. just, eh, I'll let the uh, the synth figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that was Chaser for the Sharp X1, which is using the OPM. And so it's not, you know, you don't have all those really nice little PSG stuff. You just got FM kind of approximating. And that's probably why it sounds a little bit warbly there, so. Not too bad. Yeah. 
we were digging around forever. Like, why does nobody have the X1 version of this up? When we first started researching this, and then we listened to it, and it's like, yeah, the other version is well, a little we, bit better. Well, we ended up ripping it ourselves, and we're like, wait, there's got to be something wrong here. And we, <laughs> and we found it, and nope, it's the same. It's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, this one is maybe the the most obvious example, but they're a little just a little bit more shrill. I've noticed the patches are a little brighter, tinnier. Uh, I mean, they still sound pretty close to the originals, but they're just a little bit smoother and rounder and nicer on the uh, PC-88. Right. right, and the Sharp X1 version was released a year later, so uh, it, w- it was a port, and it, and it had to be, uh, you know, kind of, translated over you know however and they they you know they probably cut some corners or whatever but there's one thing i want to bring up here and you know we talked about you know a few of the composers uh you know yumi satake and chihiro fujioka um there's another one here that is not well let's let, let's talk about it a little bit yuji sasai is a former composer and bass guitarist he started his band when he was 15 years old before he started working on games and wrote music for anime and, uh, you know, a, a few things in the, the mid 80s, there's a lot of credit saying that he worked on Va- Advanced Fantasian, but we couldn't find any confirmation of this anywhere. I looked on, uh, you know, 50 different places and I, I can't confirm that he actually did. Even on the Wikipedia page, there's a Wikipedia page for him in Japanese and it says like there's no actual credit. They do list the game, but um, again, I, I don't know if I believe it. Now, here's what I might swallow a little bit is the uh the fact that when this was ported over it could be sasai did the port to x1 that i can believe that yeah i i have not seen i have not seen any credits for him in 88 starting in 89 his name starts to appear so so that could be it yeah it could be absolutely and his name will get intertwined very closely with our third composer when we bring him up which is why we mentioned him now even though he didn't technically work on the music for this game, but yeah, he's a he's a he's a player in this story. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, from his his style and career, there's also a lot of rumors that this is the same person as Alice Soft's uh, uh, outsourced, um, you know, freelancer Dragon Attack. So uh, that that's you know something to to bring up here. I mean, but again, we don't have any proof that he he worked <laughs> on uh, this soundtrack, so. Don't want to speculate too much. No, but with that said, should we get on to a little bit more music? Yeah, yeah, because I do want to talk about uh, Fujioka very soon, too. So let's get into our next track here. This is Dirty Cave.
That was Dirty Cave, composed by Yumi Sitake and Chihiro Fujioka. And I have to say, initially I couldn't tell what it was that was really catchy here, but I think this is in a really odd time signature. I was just starting to try to count it. I think it's something like 11-8. I was like, oh, it's in three. And then I'm like, wait, I'm off beat every like measure or two. So there's like, there's some funkiness going on here. This is one of my favorite tracks, man. This (laughs) is like one of the best. It's so um, delusional, I I guess. It's, it it sounds really desperate and chaotic, but it's it's probably my favorite one almost. It, it's got this like, it's, it's, it's simple too. It's, it's not, it's da, 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 da. It, It just, I don't know. I, I really like this one. Yeah, I, it's got enough going on that I can see it being effective for quite a few loops. It's just not. It, the only problem is it's a little. It's a little on the short side. Like if it were a little bit, there's a little bit more substance there. I can continue listening to it like a lot longer. But yeah, a- after we listen to it like three loops just now, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how much longer it can take. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. But yeah, I, I wanted to bring up Chihiro of Fujioka. Very interesting individual. Uh, Fujioka started his career as a programmer and sound designer and composer at Crystal Soft in 1983, very early on, the, the inception of Crystal Soft. And uh, started early with a text adventure game called Earthbound, as uh, well as leading the sound team for Budai and Borfus. Uh, <laughs> the Borfus is, I, I, I don't really know much about it. It's Borfus to Goni no Akuma, which is. Um, like the five devils of Borfis or something. Um, <laughs> but it was also the sole programmer for the game Lizard. We talked about that earlier, uh, one of the, uh, Crystal Soft's games. And then in 1990, when Crystal Soft merged with TNE Soft, he was somewhat promoted to director of the Osaka branch for TNE Soft. So he was kind of leading their software division. And then shortly after that, he made the jump over to Square. And he became director of one of their sound departments. And then he scouted two composers and musicians. One was Koji Ide, and the other was Ryuji Sasai, who we were talking about earlier. And mm-hmm. Ryuji Sasai was a, a freelancer at this time, uh, both former colleagues at Crystal Soft. And while uh, composing some of the music for Final Fantasy Legend 3 alongside Sasai, he was actually the sound uh, director. So he was doing uh, the sound direction and the uh, composition at the same time. He was mm-hmm. a writer for Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Sasai was the, the composer for that. And then in 1994, he transferred to the Tokyo branch and ended up being director for Super Mario RPG. Pretty rad, right? Yeah. Favorite favorite game of a lot of people, not just me, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then around 2000, he left Square along with uh, former colleagues to join newly formed a group called Alpha Dream, where he directed a number of games and helped design several of the Mario and Luigi games, like Mario and Luigi, like the spiritual successors to uh, Super Mario RPG. Yeah, I gotta I gotta jump in here and say that I was really sad when there wasn't a quote unquote sequel to Mario RPG. Everybody said, "Oh, there's the Paper Mario games." There's something about them never felt right to me. And then the Mario and Luigi games came out and was like, it's it's the same game. Yeah. yeah. I never yeah. made the connection. I mean, I wouldn't have gone and looked through the credits to figure that out. But this is why all of those Squaresoft people that worked on Mario RPG uh, went, went over to Alpha to Dream. Alpha Dream yep. <laughs> but yeah. Paper Mario, I, I really like too, though. Hey, it's a good game, but they, they have a different feel. They're a little, a they're, little slower. They're, they're different games. Know. They're different yeah, games. They're exactly. more of like a, like a, you know, almost like solving puzzles and mysteries and stuff. <laughs> Anyways, he wasn't really involved heavily in game composition after Final Fantasy Legend 3, um, but he continues to do music as a drummer, and he's a member of Uematsu's Earthbound Papas, and yeah, he also <laughs> participates in recordings from time to time. Super interesting guy, looks like the nicest person on the planet. <laughs> uh, if you go to his, um, we'll put a link to his um, his Twitter account, it's just him playing like bongos like <laughs> in a video. <laughs> you just sit there, he looks so happy, it's so good, it's so cool. I really... <laughs> I really uh, got a lot of inspiration out of this composer because I, I just thought like, wow, this guy started so early, uh, went through so many different phases of his career, and he just looks like he's enjoying life now, just doing what he loves. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of us really love games, and it's a hard industry to stick around in. So always a lot of respect for the folks that managed to make it work for them, you know, moving from sound to directing to writing, to, you know, working on <laughs> working on games more, you know, as a consultant, which I think he's doing more of these days. So, I mean, 82, 83 is when he started. That was a long time ago now. Yeah, he's been <laughs> doing it longer than I was born. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
Anyways, let's get into our next track here. This is Omens, composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka. Omens from Advanced Fantasian on the PC-88. Suitably epic. Got nice sort of fantasy sound to it. Uh, I really like this track. I mean, it's another really short one. But I gotta say, like, just really great chords and, you know, composition on this. As, as short as it is, it's really good. It felt like a slowed down Alicia Dragon track to me. Uh, but I, I really like this one. It's got a lot of that, um, that ominous feeling, which works for the, uh, I guess, where you play it in the game. I didn't play the game enough to know what, like where stuff plays. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, there, there's a lot of different dialogue in this game. It's very wordy. And so um, the the focus is on shifting your mood around, not really getting you in the action. So um, I think it's really important to have this kind of music, um, these, these kind of very dramatic um, scenes in the game. Totally. Yeah. I mean, there's... Uh you can't see what we were looking at, but the game has a really cool graphical art style. You know, it looks like anime, but hand-drawn kind of thing. And so the visuals really do a good job of mapping to the music that you're listening to. And man, like the character manual art is super great. I it's, wish we... <laughs> yeah, we could put a link to that, yeah. Yeah, right? we'll put a link to that. But I, I feel like they did a good job of uh, taking the very tiny little window with the nice graphics they had in the corner and, you know amplifying it with the music that they had written for it so yeah 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 you know it, it does look like a, a a pretty wizardry game but like it's still early like this is 89 and it's also on aging technology right oh yeah. so like very aging technology so like i think for what it is it looks very pretty uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the graphics so let's play another track here this is black knight from advanced fantasian Thank you. 
right, that was Black Knight from Advanced Fantasian, composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka. Now you know where Atreyan Odyssey got its sound from. <laughs> These classic 80s wizardry PC-88 RPGs. Uh, it's great. I, I love this track. Again, another short one, but... I you know I can imagine the you know the character sprite if this is a boss or or something you know like a mid boss this feels like the perfect kind of music that you would have fighting him. <laughs> really, Black Knight is a bad guy. It sounds like it, doesn't it? Like you you never yeah. have like a good Black Knight, do you? <laughs> when was I the guess last that's time? true. <laughs> uh, I, 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 mean, I think like yeah. you know the Dark Knight. No, no, <laughs> sure, didn't, sure. didn't work. Okay. In the eighties, I think it was a little more straightforward. Like, oh yeah, yeah the, the the black knight's the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, I don't know. Could be wrong. Fair. Uh, yeah, no, this is a cool track, and it's got a lot of energy. Really like it. We could talk about this track a lot more, but let's just get into another one. This is Ruin from Advanced Fantasia. <laughs> on the PC-88, composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka. This is such a nice, like, <laughs> beat to it. Like, such a chill, like, kind of jazzy vibe. Does not imply ruin whatsoever to me. No, no. It actually, uh, this is a bit of a deep cut, but what's the show about? It reminds me of a Dan Froelich track, you know, Jill of the Jungle. No, yes. That kind of like love wonky it, yeah. atonality, like do, 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 kind of like a descending melody line that do, feels do, a little do, like... Do, do. You know, the, there yeah. is a track, <laughs> there is a track that I, I cannot pinpoint that it's, it reminds me of so much and I just, <laughs> it's eating me up. It's, oh God. It, it'll come to me maybe at the end of the show. Oh, we'll see. Oh man, it's going right. to kill me. <laughs> anyway, so you, you got this timeline written out in here in the show notes. Let, let's talk about this a little bit. All right. So here's the thing. When I was reading all of these stories, the intertwined stories of Fujioka, Sasai, and of course, Satake, I was like, I can't keep all of this straight. They're all moving around. There, there's there's some interesting like threads connecting these people here. I got I to gotta kind of piece this together. So I went and you know, took all three of their stories and see how do they kind of fit together. So I'll try to go through this quickly because I know we've covered a lot of it, but there are some added details here. So, all right, we start in 1983. Fujioka joins Crystal Soft. He's their core composer, programmer. He's working on this graphic text adventure game, Earthbound. He's the main composer until 1988, pretty much the only one. Then uh, in 86, you know, going back a few years, Crystal Soft's working on Famicom Disk System games under the Disk Original Group with Squaresoft and uh, Microcabin and some of these other companies. Then we go on, you know, future 1988, uh, he hires Satake or Kinoshita, and she works on Advanced Fantasian. Uh, she works on a few other other games, Crimson 2, Mugen no Shinzo 3, Crimson 3. Uh, and then in 1990, Crystal Soft merges with TNE Soft, and Fujioka becomes the director of this new Osaka branch. All that's kind of kind of old hat, right? So... 91, Fujioka moves over to Square, recruits Sasai, who then works on the music for Final Fantasy Legends, and then Mystic Quest. Now, Satake, this is an interesting one, 
kind of sticks around at uh, TNE Soft. Uh, it sounds like with the director gone, she's sort of the most senior person now. So she works on a couple of games. And then it sounds like she became the director a few years later and stayed until about 1996. So she was uh, head honcho of sound over at TNE. So praise all those golf games. Thanks, Yumi Satake. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, going on. So around 96, uh, 95, 96, uh, Fujioka directs Mario RPG. Over at Square. Has jumped over, over at Square, Square at that point, yeah. Yeah, uh, Sasai also is working at Squaresoft, works on Treasure of the Rudris, Toval number one, Bushido Blade two, leaves Square around 1998. In the year 2000, Yumi Satake's got her own agency for game development, uh, audio, that sort of thing. Then we go back to the whole Fujioka leaves Squaresoft in 2000, forms Alpha Dream or, or you know, joins with the team at, over at Alpha Dream, works on some of the Mario and Luigi games. Uh, <laughs> these are kind of funny, you know. He then goes on to work for Uematsu's band, the Earthbound Papas. And most recently, this is the strangest thing. Apparently, he was consulting on the 2021 game Fantasian by Mistwalker, if the credits are to be believed. So can't get away from those Earthbounds and those uh, Fantasians, I guess, yeah. this guy. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, that's the um, the iOS exclusive game. That's like a it looks really neat. If if anybody um, has played it, it's it's like a diorama. Uh, it's really, yeah. really cool looking. Um, all the all all the scenery is all like real sets. It had almost nothing to do with this game, other than the fact that like thirty years ago, uh, this dude like was working with Hironobu Sakaguchi over at Square, and it made it much harder for SEO for me to find anything about the old Fantasian <laughs> games. It was like every time I would look, I would have I know, to like find do this one, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was in the same boat too. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> let's. I, I want to talk about the game briefly, but I think it's it's time for another track here. This is Cursed Valley from Advanced Fantasia. That was Curse Valley, composed by Yumi Satake, Chihiro Fujioka for Advanced Fantasian on the PC-88 using the YM-2608. I don't want to be wherever this is. It sounds yeah. This dangerous. sounds like a, yeah, like a dystopian <laughs> like space falling apart ship. <laughs> it's creepy. Like, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, really creepy. it's really cool. Like, it's really cool. I love, I love when there's like a drastic change in tone from a lot of the other parts of a, of a game soundtrack, and this one is like... 
way out there in terms of moodiness. Way this, even more. This yeah. Soundtrack though is really dynamic. There's got a. They really have put a lot of different moods and and swing into the uh, emotions for all all of the tracks. We've listened to so much different variety at this point. It's it's hard to know it's the same game if you didn't hear some of these little tiny tinges of of style that are kind of reiterated yeah and we're even skipping a few there's there's a few other yeah. tracks that have even you know wilder style well not wilder but you know like drastically different from what we've already played it's definitely worth a listen it's like uh, t- 20 tracks in total and and what's really cool about this uh is you know and this is true for a lot of pc88 games is uh pc88 and 98 is they had a music menu right from the get-go so that's how we're listening to a lot of music uh today is you know going right through the uh the sound test sound test yeah yes. with all the names too so <laughs> yeah yeah we got all these track names from the sound test with yeah. uh you know english typos and all uh, cursed <laughs> valley is spelled c-u-r-s-t but you know it's good enough close honestly that's pretty close no that was uh mr cursed that was his song no, i'm just oh, kidding no, i'm just yeah. kidding <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so why don't we get into this next track, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the game, which we haven't done much up to this point. This is Bad Psy for Advanced Fantasian on the PC-88. composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka for the game Advanced Fantasian, and I think we stumbled upon Dracula's Vacation Home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a like a really slowed down, happier version of it. The, you know, the beginning of this song I wasn't really too fond of, but at the end that dun, 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 dun. Oh man, <laughs> it's so cool. That's a really nice, like, kind of like Tenuto bass line there. I, I really like that. And that, and that twinkly psg just kind of doing their own you know sprite dance at the end is is pretty cool too oh i love that intro actually i think that like thing nah, is just like I, yeah uh, i was just like eh. <laughs> no. that's fair you know <laughs> anyway let's <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the game we've gone this whole time and honestly we're pretty close to the end of the show so we don't have all that much to say but let's get into what we do have <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was a, a sequel to the masterpiece Fantasian. And, 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 you know, to be fair, the early Fantasian game was was very, very, you know, bare bones. I think it, it was all black and white. And it had that, you know, 
like 3D perspective, but it was, you know, just lines and yeah, like very, the wire very line, lines and text. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, yeah, this in the late 80s, they, they made a lot of improvements, you know, so it's a uh, fantasy world, high fantasy world, swords, magic. And the box says, um, you know, worthy of, uh, of the name Paradise, where illusion, courage, and kindness, all these sources come together. <laughs> um, but hundreds of years ago, a huge stone in the mountains uh, began to, to fall, and it cursed the land and, like, scorched the earth. And this huge meteorite came down, and monsters began to... Uh, it's starting to sound familiar, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, came under the influence of the world, and basically, a guild was created to manage and protect the uh, the people that were left. Right, and there's you know, so sword fighters, wizards, and all this stuff, and the game um, is made with that that kind of board game mentality and focus, where it's like that Western style uh, role playing game. It's not really flashy. Um, but it's and it doesn't have really detailed composition or anything like that. But the uh, the story and um, the you know tale that you go through is is kind of like the the main point. And that's you know the the visuals and stuff are kind of just meant to get you from point A to point B. You can think of it a lot uh, the screen design, like the way that things are um, like Shadowgate, mm-hmm. but uh, but more cropped. So like a fourth of the view is like the visuals. Um, the bottom half is like your player stats and like your level. Uh, stuff like that, and then the the um, the right hand side of the screen is all um, story and, and and verbiage and character dialogue and stuff like that. And um, what's interesting here is there's a lot of um, points in the game that are not conventional for role playing games. For example, uh, characters they don't feel tired ever, and <laughs> and medicine um, works immediately when you use it, and you can have things like items like infinite items and stuff like that a lot of things that were were not in a lot of other western style rpgs um yeah that like makes, weight limits and, and rest times right. and things like that yeah exactly but what yeah. makes this game a lot more realistic is the character creation it's very elaborate there's um hit points magic points those are commonplace but there's other abilities such as um unlocking abilities like picking locks and stuff like that we talked about that briefly mentioned that earlier um, there's tracking abilities, so you can like track different um, monsters or, or animals and stuff like that. Um, you can master each weapon, each different item. You can and you can basically master in the game, and you can kind of level those up as you go through. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a listening ability, so you can kind of like spy or <laughs> um, kind of in, like listen in on different conversations, stuff like that. I, I think it's really interesting. It's a, it's kind of a different tw- twist on some of the traditional stats that you'd have in these games. Um, weapons also have weight and compatibility, uh, which was, I think we saw a lot in, you know, some of the early um, wizardry games. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I don't know about compatibility, but definitely weight, you know, encumbrance was kind of a Well, a compatibility stat, with yeah. certain, certain characters, right? So like, you know, a dwarf isn't going to have a, you know, a you know, broadsword or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. And then, um, you know, some, some medicines and stuff like that where you use potions, they're uh, uh, immediate, but some items are slowly effective. So, like, you use it, it might not, you know, for an hour start, you know, they, they have timers on them and stuff like that. So, it's, <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah. And then um, the, the part that turns more like a board game, in a sense, is the combat style. And this is interesting. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like... I, I, it's kind of like Advance Wars, but it's also kind of like um, like any other tactical RPG, right? So maybe even um, what would be a good example? Well, just to give some context, so you know, a lot of this is a first-person dungeon crawler. When you're walking around the dungeon, it's it's you know wizardry or whatever. You have that first-person view. You're walking through corridors, but instead of uh, you know like uh, Dragon Quest or wizardry, where you kind of have the character stats at the bottom and you're just still looking in the dungeon it switches to this top down like kind of board view where all of the you know the characters are placed on on it you know like in, in a grid so right. i use shining force that's not exactly right it's it's more it looks like a strategy game but it's maybe not i don't know i didn't fire, play maybe it. fire yeah. emblem is a good yeah that's a good example yeah, yeah. so yeah. so that's kind of where they diverged a little bit from the classic formula so instead of always being in that first person view you do you know switch to more of like you know would be common in a in a strategy RPG, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. 
Um, and also things that are really neat about the combat is like depending on the weapon, um, there's two actions required to attack. So like if your character has a specific number of actions that are allotted for that move, um, like the bow, for example, one action would be to pull the bow back and then the other one is to release, right? So <laughs> it's not it's not like a single sword slice, right? It's like a, two actual actions, like pull, release, <laughs> you know? So like they, they get really in depth. There's not a lot of battles in the game, but once they start, it can take, you know, hours to complete. So it's it's very, uh, you know, the, the, it's very systematic how they have these, these battles lay out. Yeah, and that's why I drew the Shining Force comparison. I think an average one of those games has like 30 battles, but the game takes about as many hours because each battle probably takes 30, 45 minutes, something like that. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. You know, that, that, that's cool. I mean, I honestly wasn't expecting to find as much interesting about this game. I thought it was going to be like pretty conventional. When you were RPG. like, hey, Brian, we should do this. There's nothing to talk about. We could just, you know, <laughs> let, let's, nah, it ended up being way interesting. There's always stuff to talk about. But this one just uncovered some really unusual stuff, especially about the composers. I was so like excited to find out about their lives and what they've been doing and just very interesting people that have done accomplished a lot over their careers and games. Right. <laughs> well, uh, we have a few tracks left. Let's listen to the finale, even though it's not uh, it's not the finale finale, but it's the finale. We got a lot of ending tracks for you folks today. We got three different <laughs> ending tracks, basically. So let's listen uh, to the, we'll start with the finale. <laughs> then we'll go into our next finales. <laughs> <laughs> So that was finale from Advanced Fantasia, and I think this is probably like the, the ending boss battle or something. It's super short. Yeah, but it's definitely more of an action tune rather than like a victory song. And, well, uh, yeah, well, yeah. what's weird about that is we just talked about the battles being really long, which they are, but this is like super short. I, I would go nuts listen to this you know, <laughs> you know, 500 yeah. times over. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think things have changed a little bit in the game industry since. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a cool it's a cool track it is it is i i definitely gotta give props to the soundtrack for liberal use of toms <laughs> and not being afraid to use those really low bass tones in this well you know why we have uh we we have a lot of um percussion really good percussion is because fujioka song that's that's his jam i guess so yeah that he was a he's he is a drummer and you know <laughs> and guy, like not just yeah. drummer like percussionist you know, oh, right. Yeah, I'd, I'd forgotten. <laughs> so, could be why. Could be why. Could be, yeah. Are you ready to get into it, Brian? Our second to last track of the night? Yeah, let's take a listen. This is Ending, composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka. <laughs> Thank you. 
was the ending track composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka for Advanced Fantasia on the PC-88 using the OPNA. This is such a nice, lively, galloping track that it's too bad it's the end because I feel like I could have <laughs> used this for some battles. It's a lot of, yeah. lot of really good energy there. I love that second half where the percussion drops out. It's just like... It's totally different feel. Like it's it's almost a different track, but it works well. It's a great transition. It feels just, you know, a little bit sad, a little bit mournful, a little bit optimistic. You know, I all think, of those. Like, calm before feels. the storm. Calm before the storm. Yeah. So before they get right <laughs> back into it. So yeah, no, this is a is, is an excellent track. I hope you're listening with headphones on. You have it turned up. It just sounds really nice. A lot of sound there. And uh, yeah, today we covered Advanced Fantasia. Quest for Lost Sanctuary on the PC-88, composed by Yumi Satake, Chihiro Fujioka, and possibly Ryuji Sasai. We're pretty sure that one's not true, but (laughs) maybe there's a credit out there that says that's true. Anyway, if you want to know more about the show, then check us out online at pixelatedaudio.com for show notes and the track list. We're also on Twitter. You can join our Discord. That's a very lively place to chat with us uh, about anything, games, music, whatever yeah we have lots of lots of folks in there talking about all sorts of fun stuff yeah a lot of people in there that we, we talk to it feels like family like i, I see like people posting it's like, oh what are they up to you know like it feels great uh if you like the show you want to leave feedback comments if you want us to do something you know we should really go back and do some more um request episodes we haven't done one in several months so it's probably Not time while, to go back yeah. and do that yeah. and uh yeah if you're new to the podcast check out some of our past episodes uh, we did Greatest Driver, which is not the greatest episode, but it's you know, <laughs> one to listen to. Yeah, we did Pac-Man a little bit before that. And uh, in the future, we've got some fun shows planned. Uh, know. You know, we'll see how many of them we pull off, but we've got some crazy ideas. Yeah, we were so <laughs> we were chomping at the bit to get back on, on, on the mics, but we're happy to be back. Yeah. So the track taken out the show here is Wisdom composed by Yumi Satake and Chihiro Fujioka for Advanced Fantasia. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you back in a few weeks for the next episode.